Good morning, YouTube. Mike here. Welcome back to Mojo Group. Today, I'm checking out another airplane out here in Atlanta. And this is an airplane that you guys have requested for me to see. As a matter of fact, it's an airplane that I've always wanted to check out. So today, we're going to go around and check it out, show you a few features. Stay tuned. So guys, here we are. We have the Grumman Tiger. For those of you who are not familiar with this brand of airplane uh, Grumman is actually a staple name uh, in American aviation and this particular model I would say for the civilian market is the top dog the Tiger a little history Grumman started making airplanes way way back and when they decided to design an airplane for the civilian market uh, the first model was the Grumman Yankee and that was a two-seater airplane which they geared that towards trainers or for new pilots to train in. Uh, at the time, Cessnas and Pipers were the you know owned the market for trainer aircraft, and so the Yankee was a competition to the 150s, the 152s, and then you had your Piper Cherokees, and. The Grumman Yankee actually, for the training market, was not all that great in the sense that it was a little too fast, a little too unforgiven, but it was successful nonetheless. And Grumman, because of the success of the Yankee, decided to make a four-place airplane. And that's why we have this design today that you see right now. Initially, the first models were the Grumman Traveler and then the Cheetah came along and those had 150 horsepower engines in them okay it was until later on in the 1970s I believe the first Tiger uh, came to market in 75 and so consider this a more beefed up Grumman Traveler okay uh, because here the power plant you have in this particular model is a Lycoming IO 360 which I'm very familiar with this is a 180 horsepower engine and so that boosts this airplane to fly much faster than a Cheetah or a Traveler okay and as you can see it's a two bladed prop it's a fixed pitch prop so and I'll show you the interior in a little bit but the airplane looks beautiful you know, I sat in it for the first time today, and man, you know, I'm gonna show you guys just how nice it is in there, and I'll talk about a, a couple of features that I personally like about it. So, as you can see here, the wings, I would say, are pretty standard. Uh, I don't think they're, I actually think the, the wings are shorter than some of the other airplanes that I've seen. Uh, they are wider, but they're shorter in length. And each wing, you can put 25.5 gallons of fuel. So one on that wing and also on this wing. And so you have about 50 gallons of fuel total uh, to work with. And this airplane will go. You can travel at least 500 miles on it, five, 600, even 700 miles, while you're only burning eight to 10 gallons of fuel per hour. Your cruise speed, you're looking anywhere from 135 to 140 knots. And this thing can also climb. You know, again, that 180 horsepower does it justice. Now, one of the things you'll notice about older airplanes, or I would say early airplanes that were built in the 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, the material used back then was metal. And so with the Tiger, this is an all metal body frame. Well, not completely all. So most of it is metal, but if I take you back here, you have some fiberglass. So if you knock on this, you see that's not metal. That's fiberglass. Okay, so some parts of the airplane was designed with fiberglass material, but most of it is metal. All right, now let's check out the interior. One of the coolest features of this airplane is that it has a sliding door, okay? And for those who are not yet flying, once you become a pilot, trust me, you're going to appreciate this sliding door so much more, especially during the summer. All right, to get in, you just step on the wing tip there, and you grab on the, actually, let me show you, 
you grab on the door and just pull yourself up. And before I get in, just let me show you the interior here. For an older airplane, now this airplane, like I said, is a 79 model. And you can see that it is well capped. If you look at the dash here. And let me just show you how far the interior goes. So you've got two seats in the back and you've got some luggage room back there. Okay, and that would take up to 120 pounds of luggage. And also to give you an idea of the leg room, you see there's more than enough leg room in, in there. But let's jump in. So my first impression of sitting in here is how high up the seats are okay you see my head do you see the top of my head now once i close this door i still have some some headroom but i love that i can sit up straight you need to sit in one of this to see what i'm saying i, I love that i can sit up straight and i can see the whole front of this airplane usually even during my training i'm sitting really low and especially if you're training and say you're flying a, a, a sportier airplane like a light sport or, or even the DA-40 that I trained in, you're sitting much lower and you're not able to see everything in front of you. Whereas with this, you sit in really upright, which for me, I can totally appreciate. Now also, the length, I mean the width of the cabin is really nice. All right, I had the uh, Chris, who was the owner, sit next to me earlier, and we had more than enough uh, shoulder room in here. So in terms of comfort, you wouldn't have a problem in this airplane. Okay, now let me show you the dash. All right, so you see in front of me, first thing you notice is that this is a six pack, all analog. But one thing I want you to put your eyes to is this. Uh, when I, again, this is the very first time I'm sitting in a Grumman Tiger, and I've seen a lot of pictures and videos online, but one of the first things I noticed is the size of this yoke. For whatever reason, I thought they would be much bigger. I, I don't know, maybe some of the pictures I saw, they just look bigger, but these are actually very compact, and I have big hands, so I like that the, uh, the yokes are smaller, all right? Same on the other side. Now, if I maybe if I move back a little bit, you may get a better uh, perspective. But anyway, let's check out the dash. All right, so here in your cockpit, you have your six pack. Okay, and if you move towards the right, now here are some of the upgrades that were done in this airplane. Uh, this Tiger is IFR certified, so you've got your radios here, the Garmin 430. Uh, and also ADS-B, uh, I was told by the owner they just installed this, so that's really neat. Uh, and then you've got your radar altitude there. You can set this either VFR or IFR, but if you're flying IFR, you can. this will come in handy because it'll let you know if you're too low to the ground. So you can set it to whatever altitude that you want. Uh, and the, below that, you've got some of your circuit breakers down here. Uh, again, some of the comments I get on my videos are, oh, what are all these buttons or why do airplanes have so many buttons? So I think you can appreciate sometimes when you don't have a lot of buttons. Uh, but let's go through it. So from here, from this side, you've got your headset jack, okay, your ignition slot there, uh, your master alternator, and these are your lights. So a lot of the electronics just below. And the main stuff here, you've got your throttle and your mixture. Now with this mixture lever, you don't have this function where you can lean uh, your mixture, but it still works great. You can pull in and out. Uh, I did say earlier that the uh, the prop is a fixed pitch prop, so you don't need you don't have any lever in here to control your prop. But this airplane still performs great uh, with a fixed pitch. Okay, you've got your carb heat there and then cabin heat here. If you look below, those are your fuel tank selectors. Again, there are two tanks, 25.5 on each. Um, and then down here, not much. Main thing here is your flaps. Okay, and you see the degrees of flaps you can have there. And let me get you, if I can get you to see that it's it's really dark down there but i was going to show you the rudder so like a lot of the other airplanes in this class 
you can see the rudders there uh, you've got your rudder and then you have tow brakes at the top there so you've got your tow brakes um, but really neat in here and I can appreciate the soft touches on the edges of the airplane and if I close the door if I pull the door close here see what I was saying you saw earlier it looked like I was just as tall sitting down in the airplane but you see I still have quite a bit of headroom here now again comfort would honestly depend on your size I've been told you know people over six feet tall find it really nice in here I'm only 510 and then also I think it depends on the uh, structure of your body frame some people have longer legs uh, some people have longer waistline so it depends on that uh, your body frame for you to see you know if, if it's comfortable in here but for me it's absolutely comfortable and again I just love the fact that I can sit up I can see everything let me show you let me show you what I mean See, this is my view. I'm, you're looking at what I'm looking at. I love the fact that I can see everything. A lot of times in the past, this is what I can see. <laughs> All I see is my dash and a little bit of the horizon at the top. But with this, look, this is really my view that you're looking at right now. And I appreciate that. So, guys, for a lot of pilots out there, myself included, if you're looking to buy... Uh, an entry-level airplane as your first airplane this is definitely a great choice this is uh, one of the airplanes that a lot of you have uh, suggested that I look into and sitting in one today I definitely will be considering it the only thing is it is above my price range but you can find Tigers anywhere from fifty thousand dollars and up but the average price for these are around 50 60 grand uh, but they're these are great airplanes and especially the power plant uh, IO360 is a bulletproof engine as you hear a lot of people say I've never had any trouble with them and most of my hours actually are in a Lycoming like IO360 so if you're out there and you're looking for something an entry-level airplane to get into definitely consider a Tiger um, you can take your family and friends on a road trip this is a true cross-country airplane and I, again I didn't sit in that back seat but I can just eye it with my with my camera to see okay there's a lot of good leg room in there uh, so these are really good airplanes to fly in and for the for the money value what you get with them I, I think you, you get a, a good deal uh, with them now I'm gonna talk to the owner who will give you a lot more details of what it takes uh, in owning one of this and what the ownership cost is and all that good stuff but that would be in my next video so stay tuned okay so this is my quick review of the Grumman Tiger I hope I've covered enough stuff for you uh, let me know in the comments below uh, what you think and if you're a Grumman pilot please comment below let me know what your experience is thank you guys so much for watching make sure you give a thumbs up if this is your first time be sure to hit that subscribe button for me again my name is mike thanks for spending time with me and i will catch you on the next video peace